Hey. So today, like, man, I don't, I wish I had, I, there were some other things I wanted to cover, but I really feel like this is more important to cover. Um, I guess for myself, I've come so far in terms of like my own personal safety and boundaries and like isolation and personal space and personal growth that I forgot what it was like to be youthful and fearful and shy, um, especially around men. Uh, I feel like for a while I've been around like a lot of good men and like a few really bad men, but um, the really bad men have like left a really impact they've left more of an impact on me than the good men so it's basically like I've normalized the good behavior of the good men but I've also normalized the bad behavior of the bad men and I just realized the imminent danger that the bad men pose on society and really toward the growth and livelihood of women in general so there's a couple of things that I want to unpack I was going to turn these into separate videos but I think I'll just kind of like splur and talk about them all at one time so the first thing I want to talk about is this video I just saw by Kevin on stage where I guess so there's some woman who's giving a talk and she's talking about margaritas oh one margarita she'll spread her legs two margaritas she'll do this I don't know she's giving some speech about margaritas and I guess how many margaritas it would take to sleep with a woman and to have all these different types of sex with a woman. Now, I'm not sure about this. I don't know what woman is out here just like having sex with people for margaritas. Like, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I think that men are, maybe prostitutes do that or something. And that's true. There are prostitutes out here. And then there, are, maybe there are some women who just have no therapy at all. They have no, like, just sense of purpose or meaning. And so they're trying to, like, fuck their way to meaning, which is a thing sometimes. Like, I feel like maybe I went through a phase like that for a very short period of time where I was, I was, I wouldn't even say I was, like, trying to do that. I would just say, like, I was trying to find... I was trying to find humanity really and just I was going through a very rough point in my life and I couldn't count on my family at all for support and I really tried to identify with just any first of all I tried to identify with other black people black women and I was like oh I would be able to find some mentor some you know woman who'd been alive longer who would be willing to help me and I couldn't find any I couldn't find one and that was the moment when I just realized like fuck the other black women like um, black women who are older than me don't give a shit about my life. And I had to sit with that and I had to like understand it, especially in including my mother. And, um, I knew at that point that like, if I wanted a change to come, I was going to have to be that change. And that's when I like started this channel. First, the first thing I did was I looked for like really any other black girls, which is, I think I made that first video where it was like, okay, black female YouTubers who inspired me and helped me find my voice. I made that video. Um, but for a very long time, the only thing I had was uh, Siren. There was like this, this YouTuber, like Sensei Siren. And she would have these videos where she was talking about like, all these things like it was like protest and police brutality and it was like really like her marginalized uh black american experience and like all of almost like the trauma porn that she was seeing and she gave so many like descriptive terms to things that i i like i didn't have words for them i couldn't understand like the like what i was seeing how i was experiencing it and how to contextualize like my own cultural relevance and place in the society as like a black woman and god i just i thank god for saran like i i want to get like a t-shirt or make like a whole album that's just like a dedication to saran for being a fucking godsend because she just she really made so many things that do not make sense make sense as like a black american girl like thank you Siren. if you ever watch any of my content ever like thank you but um I when I was watching that video it 
the one by Kevin on stage, it reminded me of Tijuana. Now, you guys not might not know this, but the most popular video on my channel is a video about prostitutes in Mexico. So this had to be like in 2020. Was it in 2020? No, this was like last, was it 2022 or 2021? I can't remember when I went to Tijuana, but I went to Mexico. Um, and I just went uh, with a guy I was talking to at that point and um we drove to mexico to go get cigarettes right because i wanted cheap cigarettes so we drive to mexico to go get cheap cigarettes and um to tijuana specifically and tijuana has like this entire like nightlife strip where it's just like strip clubs and like prostitutes all on the street and we like we went there um because like uh, you get the cigarettes when you like exit Tijuana at night, but we had, so we spent like a whole day driving there and then we like, um, so we stayed overnight at this little hostel there and then in the morning when we left, that's when we went and got the cigarettes. Um, anyway, so, um, when we were at night, like when we got there, we went to all these strip clubs. I had never been to one, you know, like he had been to it a bunch of times. He just like showed, he just showed it to me. And then, and when I, when I went, I was like, um, initially it was like, kind of like, wow, like this is a real place. And the really shocking thing about it was like, there were so, it was, I was just surrounded by Americans. It kind of looked like, um, if you've ever been on a college campus, just go to like a college bar and just the type of people that you see there, those were the type of people who were just, they were just all in Tijuana. It was mostly men, but they were just like, there were women too, but they were just like there in those strip clubs, um, throwing dollars and stuff at the women who were working in those strip clubs. But this is like Tijuana. So they, the, the currency there is like pesos. Um, and the women are just like stripping and doing all these things. But there's this one strip club that we went to. It was like this Japanese strip club. I, I'll post the link so you can, I put the, the videos are still on my channel. You can just watch it. Um, so we go inside this club and uh, there were these, there were all, all these girls on stage that were like, basically all of them were like completely naked. And I, so I went to the bar and I just like cashed out like forty dollars in ones and I just went to every girl and I gave her like I just tried to equally distribute all the ones to each girl now there was one girl who was like oh I guess she's like I think she thought I was like interested in her I wasn't really interested in any of the girls like I'm not a lesbian but I felt like because I was in the space and because I just I had money it was my responsibility to like give those women money because like that was their job like that's where they work and they are there to get money and I wanted to give them money because it was really weird too there was a lot of people there who weren't really giving them money they were just like watching them do shit but they like weren't actually throwing cash which I thought was weird like everybody there should be like d giving cash because like this is like a it is a monetary transaction and I think the other weird part about that place was like on so we were on like level one and then there's level two where it's just like the poles, the stage, the cash, the girls who are naked. But then, like, level three through five, you go and I guess they, like, the girls actually just have sex with you. Like, you just give them money and then you can fuck them. So it's like a whole prostitution ring on the top levels. Um, now, we were on the bottom level. And so as soon as I gave, there was this one girl, so I give her cash, right? And um, then she, like, goes back behind the stage and she grabs, like, a dildo and she grabs another girl, brings the other girl out, and then the two girls start, like, fucking the dildo, like, right in front of, like, the, they were, like, so it was, like, the stage part, and, like, where I put the cash, they just literally started just fucking the dildo, like, right on top of the cash, and I was just, like, I was just shocked, like, uh, that, because I would only put, like, four dollars or something, like, on the ground, and it was, like, that, like, no, like, no one had asked them to do this, they just went, and they did it, and I, like, I didn't have, like, I had spent all my, like, my dollars, because I didn't, I only had, like, a hundred dollars in, in cash, and I told you, I went around, and I gave every girl, like, as much of the cash as I could give, so I didn't have any more, um, but it to me it was just like damn like 
it just really is like that like they these girls are like programmed to like just do more and more and more and more for like like the more money you give them like the more sex they will have it's just like okay this much sex for one dollar this much sex for do this many sexual things for dollar 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 and i think that's what this woman was saying in that margarita video but then um when i saw today that i saw the post of rick ross and what he said um about DJ Envy's wife like I don't I, I guess like DJ Envy had some interview with his wife where his wife was talking about how like she doesn't she's never had an orgasm so that's a pretty you know like it, there are a lot of women actually who've never had an orgasm and like that's something that's not to be like laughed at it's mostly something to just like work on and she has a partner who seems to love her like who she can work on it with so that should be something like maybe people mostly women probably should enter that conversation women who have more like women who have had orgasms should enter that conversation and like from a place of care try to like you know make her feel safe but instead rick ross like i don't even know i don't feel like anyone at all tagged rick ross in this post and like said anything but he went out of his way to literally say like he basically wants to fuck dj envy's wife and then he started making all these comments about how his children should start working for him and cleaning his yard I don't even know like all of it was so strange and it was like to me it was so violent and it was so disgusting and it brought me back to that strip club and it brought me back to the I've had other conversations on this channel where where I talked about like how dangerous I think sex work is for women like just all types like only fans whatever it is like it's it feels like it's so dangerous for women to exist and just have like sexual autonomy I definitely think women still need to have sexual autonomy and what I mean by that is not like in this like sexual liberation way where you should just go out and fuck everybody that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is you should have a choice in like what you do with your body and you should make those choices for yourself I do think that it comes with kind of a lot of responsibility though because you have to like protect your mental space you have to te protect your bodily space um and it was like the way that Rick Ross was talking about someone else's wife to me felt so violent and it felt so offensive and it made me like really really sad and really angry and it just really reinforced like why I just stay away from black men like that was disgusting and it I feel like there are so many people who praised it and like probably people aren't going to call him out on it and um it just it's just so gross like it just it really um to me it was just another example of like the hate that black men have for just women in general <laughs> i don't know if tj and v's wife would be considered black but uh when people when you're confused about why people are calling black men monkeys and why black women are aborting their children at just catastrophic rates it's because nobody wants to live in a society with people like him it's way better to like kill abortion is better than producing somebody like him like I've got it like this is not my story but I'm saying like if I if I was ever violated by someone like a Rick Ross type of person I would actually kill myself like I would just shoot myself right in the fucking head it would better it would be better to be dead after something like that happened than to live on and have to like try to process like people like him make people want to die it was it was so disgusting to like you guys don't feel me because like a lot of you have just never been maybe some of you actually have been violated but you've just never had the opportunity to like really process it 
and step away from it and then also talk to people who have never been violated and realize like what it is exactly that you lost I just feel like there's some people who are, who have just hypersexualized their lives in all these ways where they have lost a sense of humanity um I don't know, it's another reason why I think it's just so important to be a human first. You just have to be a human first. And then after you've like found your humanity, then you can be a human with a sex life. If you're a black woman, I would encourage you to be a black woman who does not have sex with black men. That would be like my life advice that I would put on a Bible and t-shirt. I've already put it into an album, but like, I don't know how I could say it louder and more clear. I don't think I can, but I mean, I can make you this video and I'm pretty serious about my video. <laughs> I don't know. I think it, it was just another example. It's like one more example of so many more. And then there was another thing that happened today that I really wanted to touch on. So Ben Shapiro posted, a, it was just like a Twitter post where he welcomed his fourth child into the world and he talked about how he's so proud that his son was born and that really touched me in a very, I don't know, I, would, I wouldn't say it wasn't a positive way or a negative way, it was just, it was very interesting to watch him talk about the pride that he feels to have another the fourth baby that he wanted and that he is proud of because like that is just not an experience that barely any black women are going to have have had or will ever have and I just want to give like a real moment of context for that because like for so many women right now in the black community they're listening to the Summer Walker EP where she's talking about how hard her life is and how like she's never really had an opportunity to live a soft life and how she's watched all these women of other races be able to live soft lives and then um, we are literally watching this rapper like Blueface who has been in a very it seems like a pretty long-term relationship with this girl Krishan who he actually hates and now she is pregnant with his child and it's almost like the butt of every joke that he wants her to abort <laughs> the child um, and I just want to say that as much as Blueface wants Krishan to abort um, his child, I also want Krishan to abort um, his child because I don't think we need any more people like Blueface on planet Earth. I think Blueface should abort all of his children and he should go die because like men like him make society worse for everyone. Men like him are the reason that uh, Brenda throws her baby in the trash can. And I hope Krishan throws Blueface's baby in the trash can. And I hope nobody cries. Maybe I will add Blueface's baby to my abortion Barbie album. Just so when that motherfucker dies, we'll all have something to remember it by. Because Blueface doesn't deserve to be alive. Neither does his children. He doesn't want them. We don't want them either. And any of the other niggers who feel like he feels. I mean it's just pathetic. Like we have to watch this. We have to live in the world where like. On one hand we have. <laughs> this Christian guy who's like. Spent his entire life basically. Trying to promote goodness and like righteousness and build a community where like his kids can thrive um and the funny thing is he's even spoken about this issue on numerous occasions how bad the abortion rate is in the black community and how devalued black life is and on the other hand we have Blueface, who is this very wealthy rapper who is throwing money right down the drain encouraging his baby mama to abort her baby 
right in front of us all. And we have a whole bunch of little niggers who are right online right now. who are making response videos in support of his abortion. And I hope they all die. I hope they all shoot each other and they all die. Because like, we don't have a need for them. Like I said before, I understand why Brenda threw her baby in the trash can. It's better to be dead than to live in a world full of people like Rick Ross and Blueface.